So we are now going into the Emerald Tablet 4, all about the space time. And this tablet is entitled The Space Born. And I just wanted to start off talking about space. You know, according to the scientists, we have three dimensions to space. Length, height, depth, up, down, left, right. And the fourth dimension would be time. And Bob is going to discuss a lot about space time and how he's cracked the code to break it. And it's something that we are aiming towards ourselves. But if you wanted to know more about the fourth dimension, I recommend Peter Ospensky. Uh, there's many other modern day writers as well that are writing about the fourth dimension. But we shall, with this tablet, be going into the realm of magic. So are you ready for that? So Fof, as a young boy, was the seeker of knowledge. He had the longing, which is what you also have. And he writes, Lishji, O oh man, to the voice of wisdom, list to the voice of Fof, the Atlantean. Freely I give to thee of my wisdom gathered from the time and space of this cycle, master of mysteries, son of the morning, living forever, a child of the light, shining with brightness, star of the morning, Foth, the teacher of men, is of all. And you may be wondering, right, okay, so you've had to pay for this course, and I was a bit reluctant of having it as being a paid course, but we all need to put bread on the table. And this is just a beginner's guide into it. So once you start going along this path, you will start finding ways. Things, as I said to you before, things will come to you that will help you with this path because the gods will supply. Foth is listening out for people like yourself. So I shall continue with Foth and a little bit about his childhood. Long time ago, I in my childhood lay neath the stars on long buried Atlantis, dreaming of mysteries far above men. And hopefully that's something you do, thinking and dreaming about all these mysteries and what life really all about. And Foff says, year after year, I sought after wisdom, seeking new knowledge, following the way, until at last my soul in great travel broke from its bondage and found it away. Free was I from the bondage of earth, men, so we're continuing our quest of the sun to fill ourselves with the light and shake off this bondage of the darkness. And as I said before, it has to come from the heart. One must desire this. It's something I'm going to keep saying. And we want to be free from the bondage. We want to be free to understand what life is all about. And as we continue this tablet, we're going to see that Foth travels to the stars. He's able to travel in his astral body, which is where the soul resides. So free from the body, I flashed through the night and locked at last for me was the star space. Free was I from the bondage of night. And we're not talking about nighttime here when the sun goes down. We're talking about the dark forces are holding us in bondage, which is seen as night. When we're free, we're living in the light in the daytime. As the Egyptian Book of the Dead talks about bringing people out into the light because the original title for that the real title for that is coming into the day so Foth writes now to the end of space sought I wisdom far beyond knowledge of finite man far into space my soul traveled freely into infinity's circle of light strange beyond knowledge were some of the planets great and gigantic beyond dreams of men yet found I law in all of its beauty working through and among them as here among men. And this is the cosmic law I was talking about in the other tablets, the universal law, which is a harmonious law. It is not chaotic like we are living our lives in chaos at the moment, which is obviously the dark forces causing this chaos and keeping us in that bondage of the night. Once we find the light, we start becoming attuned to the real harmonies and vibrations of this universe and what the divine wants us to do we will be in tune with the divine if we follow the light so Foth continues flash forth my soul through infinity's beauty far through space i flew with my thoughts rested i there on a planet of beauty strains of harmony filled all the air Shapes there were, moving in order, great and majestic as stars in the night, mounting in harmony, 
ordered equilibrium, symbols of the cosmos, like unto law. And it's this equilibrium that we're trying to attain to, we're trying to find balance and harmony. And in your esoteric studies, you'll come across a lot of symbolism. And why symbolism? And that's because this is for the initiated, not for the profane. Only those who study will understand the symbolism. Many start with learning the symbols for the planets and the stars, and this will lead you on to other symbols. These are all keys. Keys in the symbols are in the symbols. And once you begin to learn what certain symbols mean, hidden away, but in plain sight, which most symbols are, then the teaching will come to you. And Foth continues about his travels. Many of the stars I passed in my journey, many of the races of men on their worlds. See, we're not the only planet doing this. Some reaching high as stars of the morning, some falling low in the blackness of night. Each and all of them struggling upward, gaining the heights and plumbing the depths, moving at times in realms of brightness, living through darkness, gaining the light. Know, O oh man, that light is thine heritage. Know that darkness is only a vow. And we're here to lift that vow. We'll talk more about the vow later in other um, tablets. Sealed in thine heart is brightness eternal, waiting the moment of freedom to conquer, waiting to rend the veil of the night. Some I found who had conquered the ether. Free of space were they, while yet they were men using the force that is the foundation of all things. Far in space constructed they a planet drawn by the force that flows through the all, condensing, coalescing the ether into forms that grew as they willed, outstripping in science, they, all of the races, mighty in wisdom, sons of the stars. Long time I paused watching their wisdom, saw them create from out of the ether Cities gigantic of rose and gold formed forth from the primal element, base of all matter, the ether fung flower. Oh, I should say the ether far flung. I do apologize. <laughs> the ether is the space, the region between earth and the heavens. It's like the glue that holds the universe together. One creates out of the ether. And we also have an ether body, an etheric body that's attuned to us and it's attuned to the ether as well, which is why we have that feeling for it. But most people ignore that etheric body. But it, the ether can be surpassed or one can become caught up in it again. And that's the ether that's outside that's gluing us to this. One is attempting to unlock space time by finding infinity's circle of light and thus become free of the bondage of the night. So to conquer the ether, what is the ether? Through his search and his lessons, Foth learned to travel through space by conquering the ether. He used the force that is all around us, the force that is the foundation of all things, as Foth explains. Far in the past, they had conquered the ether, freed themselves from the bondage of toil, formed in their mind only a picture and swiftly created it grew. Forth then my soul sped throughout the cosmos, seeing ever new things and old, learning that man is truly space-born, a son of the sun, a child of the stars. Know ye, O man, whatever from ye inhabit, surely it is one of the stars. Thy bodies are nothing but planets revolving around their central suns. When ye have gained the light of all wisdom, free shall ye be to shine in the ether. One of the suns that light outer darkness, one of the space born grown into light. Just as the stars in time lose their brilliance, light passing from them into the great source, so, O oh man, the soul passes onward, leaving behind the darkness of night. Formed forth ye from the primal ether, filled with the brilliance that flows from the source, bound by the ether, coalesced around, yet ever it flames until at last it is free. So if you follow this work, then the sun will shine within you. The sun radiates in and then out of you. It's like I was saying before about that spark inside you. That spark will turn into a flame that is connected to the sun. You will be bringing forth sunshine, sun rays. You will be the sun king or the sun queen. So Foth continues with 
Lift up your flame from out of the darkness. Fly from the night and ye shall be free. Travelled I through the space time, knowing my soul at last was set free, knowing that now might I pursue wisdom. And some of you might already be doing astral travelling. It's a, said to be a technique to it, though if we concentrate, we can do it and we'll have a tether to us from our body to our astral body as it goes out. So you won't get lost, you won't be left, left out there. That tether will always bring you back. You know, great thing about being in your astral body it's all to do with what you're thinking. If you want to go home, you go back home. If you want to go to the stars, your astral body will take you to the stars. So Foff continues with, because he's been traveling, remember, through the space time. Until at last I passed to a plane hidden from knowledge, known not to wisdom, extension beyond all that we know. Now, O oh man, when I had this knowing, happy my soul grew, for now I was free. Listen, ye space born, listen to my wisdom. Know ye not that ye too will be free. Listen again, O oh man, to my wisdom, that herein ye too may live and be free. Not of the earth are ye, earthy, but child of the infinite cosmic light. And this is one of the things about modern day life. They tell us we're just an earth person that lives on this planet. We have now live and die and we can just do what we want. We have free will, so we're allowed to do what we want. But we're more than that. And those with a spiritual inclination, <clears throat> those that want to go forth in this, in this work, you can feel it. You can feel there's more to life. Most people want to turn away from that. But people like yourself, you're going forwards. As Foss says, Know ye not, O man of your heritage, know ye not ye are truly the light. Most people don't know that. They're quite turned away from it. But that's because they're not told about it. You know, it's not discussed at school, it's not discussed by our peers. So son of the great sun. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom, truly aware of your kinship with light, now to ye I give knowledge freedom to walk in the path I have trod, knowing ye truly how by my striving I trod the path that leads to the stars. So Foss given us these books so that we can follow in his footsteps. And we can do this as well if we develop ourselves. Hark ye, O man, and know of thy bondage, know how to free thyself from the toils. Out of the darkness shall ye raise upwards, one with the light and one with the stars. Follow ye ever the path of wisdom. Only by this can ye raise from below. We want to go from below on the earthly plane up to the heavens. Ever man's destiny leads him onward into the curves of infinity's all. And that's very important, the curves. We'll be coming to circles and squares soon. Be a roundy, not a squarey, as Roger Hargrave used to say to us as when I was a little child, reading the little books. Very hard to get them books now, but very wise, and all children should read them. Be a roundy, not a squarey. Know ye, O man, that all space is ordered. Only by order are ye one with the all, order and balance of the law of the cosmos. Follow, and ye shall be one with the all. He who would follow the path of wisdom, open must he be to the flower of life, extending his consciousness out of the darkness, flowing through space and time in the all. So again, this is not given to you on a plate. You have to seek. We've got to decipher these tablets. You have to discover, to fathom, to ponder, and the answers will come to you. But to do this, one has to lift the vow of darkness. The darkness has come down like a vow upon everyone, hiding us away from the light. And many of you know, that know your Egyptian stories know that Isis, the goddess Isis, holds the vow which can be lifted if we work on ourselves. But Foff does give us one clue, one answer in this paragraph. Deep in the silence, first ye must linger until at least ye are free from desire, free from the longing to speak in the silence. Conquer by silence the bondage of words. Abstaining from eating until we have conquered desire for food, that is bondage of soul. 
then lay ye down in the darkness. Close ye your eyes from the rays of the light. Centre thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. So we're talking again about the silence and meditation and abstaining from eating. Well, I would think that it's probably really to be fasting. It'd be great to be able to conquer the desire for food. But that's the same as um, fasting. We're stopping ourselves having that need, having a clear body. We're not polluted by the earthly foods. So we centre thy soul force in the place of thine consciousness, shaking it free from the bonds of the night. Place in their mind, place the Im image thou desires. Picture the place thou desires to see. Vibrate back and forth with thy power. Loosen the soul from out of its night. Fiercely must thou shake with all of thy power until at last thy soul shall be free. Mighty beyond words is the flame of the cosmic, hanging in planes unknown to man, mighty and balanced, moving in order, music of harmonies, far beyond man. Speaking with music, singing with colour, flame from the beginning of eternity's all. Spark of the flame art thou, O children, burning with colour and living with music. We've got to remember that music is part of the harmonious way of living. We hear a lot about the harmony of the spheres, the songs of the universe. And we are trying to listen out and attune ourselves to that. I'm not saying go and put your favourite pop music on or your favourite rock music or whatever you're into. We're listening out for the music, the harmony of the universe. List to the voice and thou shalt be free. Consciousness frees, fused with the cosmic, one with the order and low of the all. Know ye not, man, that out of the darkness light shall flame forth, a symbol of all. Pray ye this prayer for attaining all wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to the all. And this is an important prayer. And I try to say it as often as I can. Mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos. I'm going to do my hands like this because this is the symbol of the car and the attaining to the divine. It's the symbol of the soul in the Egyptians' pantheon. So mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos. Draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness. Magnet of fire that is one with the all. Lift up my soul, thou might and potent child of the light turn not away draw me in power to melt in thy furnace one with all things and all things in one fire of the life strain and one with the brain and as i've already warned this type of work attracts the dark forces it spots that light and wants to know what's going on and if possible to put that spark of light out to extinguish it but with this prayer, we're asking for the spirit of light to shine through us. We're asking to be enlightened. And Foth continues, when ye have freed thy soul from its bondage, know that for ye the darkness is gone. Ever through space ye may seek wisdom, bound not by fetters forged in the flesh. Onward and upward into the morning, Free flash, O soul, to the realms of light. Move thou in order, move thou in harmony. Freely shalt move with the children of light. Seek ye and know ye my key of wisdom. Thus, O man, ye shall surely be free. So what did Foth learn on his travels? He learned that there is awe, law, cosmic law, that there is order, universal order. And law and order, according to the ancient peoples who worshipped the gods to avert the chaos because the gods had the power to bring law and order. What Foth is telling you is that you can develop that power that averts the chaos. You can bring law and order to your life. But to do this, you have to learn it, study it, become it. So on we go to Emerald Tablet 5, the Dweller of Unal. 
for frights. Oft dream I of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Aeon on aeon now existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earthborn, lord of the earth in Atlantis's day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through Santal, keeper of the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis's day. Sifoth is telling us about the ancients, those who have taken this path and followed it through. He's speaking about the masters of wisdom and these masters of wisdom want to pass on this knowledge to those that are willing to follow this path. As Fox says, they followed through it and they're now the keepers of this path. And they've always been keepers, folk who are always ready to pass on the knowledge because they are always welcoming truth seekers and spiritual warriors to help in the battle with the darkness an ongoing battle. So I'm going to read some more of Foth. Master he from a cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men, not as the earthborn he from beyond us, son of a cycle advanced beyond men. And we're talking about a shining sun of a cycle. As the suns go around in cycles and all the different universes, there is a sun that's moving through and they also go through stages. They will live and die as well, but they're on a totally different timeline than we, well, not a timeline, but suns live for much longer than planets do. And our planets will, over time, turn into a star and then become a sun. The planet Earth will do this. The moon will grow into a planet that will become a star, that will become a sun. Again, over time, so, you know, I find hard to fathom so I'll continue with Foth. Know ye, O man, that Horlet, the master, was never one with the children of men. So Horlet was not one of the original children of men. Far in the past time, when Atlantis first grew as a power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Horlet. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men, Mastering darkness, leading the man soul upwards to heights that were one with the light. So Horlick the master is not a human person, but someone from another realm. Horlick built the temple and other forms from his thoughts. He has conquered the ether. Once you've conquered the ether, your thought forms are very powerful. And thought forms are when we, like I've said before, when we send out a thought form against somebody, if it's something horrible, they will feel it like stabbing pains like being pricked by a pin and if you're sending out love they will feel that vibration so Horlick has understood the way of the laws of the universe and how they operate and he has outshined them he has transcended which is what we're aiming to do and this is the power that one can develop if one follows this path and passes on to the next stages thought is a powerful thing what we think is not kept just in the mind that thought form goes out so be careful what you think negative thought creates negative energy thinking bad thoughts about someone does reach them and they might not be fully aware of it but it does affect them Rudolf Steiner talks about this negative thoughts he says kills them it affects their astral body and that in turn affects our physical body if your astral body is damaged your physical body feels the after effects from it this is why so many of the teachings talk about positive thought. People annoy us all the time, but if we can understand why they annoy us, what is the reasoning behind their annoyance and look deeper into that, we can be quite surprised by the results. We are caught up in patterns of behavior as are other people, and that is why they react in odd ways. Say you're brushing your hair and you drop that brush, you're a little irked. You pick up the brush and then drop it again. Annoying, eh? Then we pick it up again. We're about to brush our hair and we drop the brush a third time and then anger rises. We curse the brush. We curse our clumsiness. And that cursing affects us and the mood it puts us into. And then that affects how we go about that day. Instead, we need to be aware that we drop that brush the first time as an accident. And that we have to be more aware of what we are doing and hopefully not drop it again. 
distraction is one of the main causes of failing this work. One needs to be aware of what one is doing all the time in one's thoughts, one's movements, one's speech, in everything. So let us now continue with Foff and Horlitt. Divided the kingdoms he into sections, ten were they, ruled by children of men. Upon another built he a temple, built but not built by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, moulded and formed by the power of Yoltalan into the forms he built with his mind. Mile upon mile it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might, black yet not black, but dark like the space-time, deep in its heart, the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, moulded and shaped by the word of the dweller. Called from the formless into a form, builded he then within it great chambers, filled them with forms called forth from the ether, filled them with wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, yet was he formed in the image of men. Dwelling among them, yet not of them, strange and far different was he from the children of men. So though all it was formless, the humans needed to see him in a form. The humans need something they can recognise so they can see it. Humans find it difficult to work with the invisible, which is why so many folk don't believe in this kind of work, because it is hidden. That is why it is called occult knowledge, and occult means hidden. But to make humans more comfortable, Horlitt gave himself a form. He then needs worthy people to continue his work, and as Foff explains here, choose he then from among the people, free, who became his gateway. Choose he the free from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers they who carried his counsel to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom. Teachers they to the children of men. And this is what we're attaining to be. We want to walk this path, develop ourselves, and then hopefully become teachers or carry on whatever it is that the divine light wants us to do, the mission that we're going to be given. So continuing about Horlitt. Placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen. Taught must he be for years five and ten. So he talks about they have a 15 year apprenticeship. Will it be a 15 year apprenticeship for you? I don't know because I'm not Horlitt. Everyone's learning at a different pace. There's no rushing of this. You've got to fully understand what's going on and what you're doing for yourself and how you're developing yourself. So I shall continue with Foff. Only thus could he have understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I, Foff, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth I travelled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain, until after much striving one of the three to me brought the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from the darkness into the light, brought he me before the dweller, deep in the temple, before the great fire. Now the great fire, the light that gives life, knowledge and wisdom, it carries everything we need and we are all connected to that fire. We've got that flame within us, but it depends on upon how bright it is within us. Is it just a spark or do you have a fully burning flame? The spiritual fire is the source. It gives us inspiration and carries the code to awakening ourselves out of the sleep and bondage that the darkness has put us in and it's put everybody into this. And we're breaking free of it. So Foth discusses what happens next. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller clothed with the light and flashing with fire. Down I knelt before that great wisdom feeling the light flowing through me in waves. Heard I then the voice of the dweller. O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loosens its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen. 
closer approach the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children, keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instrument thou of the light from beyond. Ready by thou may to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom, secrets and mysteries unto thee shall unveil. Now forth answers the master of cycles, saying, O light that descended to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom that I might be a teacher of men. Give thou thy light that I may be free. Spoke then to me again the master. This is the master speaking. Age after age shall ye live through your wisdom. I, when over Atlantis the ocean waves roll, holding the light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come whenever thou shalt call. Go thee now and learn greater wisdom. Grow thou through light to infinity's all. And this is something you will find for yourself. You've probably looked at other teachings. You've probably studied other histories. There's a reason you've come to this path. And that knowledge and learning will never cease. You can always learn something new. And Foth writes, Longer then dwelt I in the temple of the dweller until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then to the path the star plains followed I then the pathway to light deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway learning the secrets below as above learning the pathway to the halls of Amenti learning the laws that balance the world to earth's hidden chambers pierced I by my wisdom deep through the earth's crust into the pathway hidden for ages from the children of men Unveiled before me ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge, found that all is part of an all, great and yet greater than all that we know. Searched I infinity's heart through all the ages, deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I found. Now, as I look through the ages, know I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater throughout the ages, one with infinity's greater than all. Light there was in ancient Atlantis, yet darkness too was hidden in all. Fell from the light into the darkness, some who had ri risen to heights among men. Proud they became because of their knowledge, proud were they of their place among men. Deep delved they into the forbidden, opened the gateway that led to below. Sought they to gain ever more knowledge, but seeking to bring it up from below. Remember with every pride, comes a fall. Pride is one of the worst of the negations that we have within us. Our ego does fight us itself. It's easily tempted by the dark forces. You know, when we walk about all puffed up, our ego, that's our ego trying to show what a great person we are. And it's not important what other people think about us. It's not important what we're putting across to people to try and get attention. What's important is what we're doing with ourselves. It doesn't matter what other people think. Fourth right. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light. Open they then by their knowledge, pathways forbidden to man. But in his temple all seeing the dweller lay in his aguante while through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans by their magic opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. So the dweller is able to astral travel as well and his soul could see what was happening to the Atlanteans, that they were falling into dark ways, that they were working with their ego and not connecting their spirituality and their soul to the light. They were being tempted and blinded by the dark forces. So continuing about the dweller. Saw he the Atlanteans by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul then back to his body. Up he arose from his aguante, called he the three mighty messengers, gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep neath the earth's crust, the halls of Amenti, Swiftly descended the dweller, 
called he then on the powers the seven laws welded changed the earth's balance humans were distracted from the light many fell to dark ways and this is what began the great fall the one you know of is in all the religions in the monotheistic religions adam and eve fell to the temptations of the devil and because of that their light was extinguished as god always leaves the path well actually it's not extinguished because the god does always leave the path open to them it dulls the flame which is why we just have a spark within us it's dimmed the light's dimmed within us and we're trying to reignite it some of the atlantis fell into the dark ways and this is why atlantis fell this is why the dweller had to call forth the lords and begin well the flood that would take atlantis so this is why atlantis fell this is the reason why the wisdom was cut off from the humans because they misused it we don't want to misuse the wisdom as Foth advised us in chapter one, if we misuse the wisdom, he will know and he will punish. And the downfall of Atlantis will be discussed in another chapter as well. But we shall continue with the reading. Down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves, shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except Unal, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller. Preserved he them to be the teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he then I, Foth before him, gave me commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O Foth, all of your wisdom, take all your records, take all your magic, go thou forth as a teacher of men, go thou forth reserving and preserving the records until in time light grows among men light shalt thou be all through the ages hidden yet found by enlightened men over all earth give we ye power free thou to give or take it away gather thou now the sons of atlantis take them and flee to the people of the rock caves fly to the land of the children of Chem. So Foth's been given the authority to continue giving this teaching. He takes the spaceship, he takes the sons of the dweller, and these are the sons and daughters of the light path. He's instructed to go to Egypt or Chem as it was known back then. And Foth tells us, then gathered I the sons of Atlantis into the spaceship. I brought all my records, brought the records of sunken Atlantis, gathered I all of my powers, instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on wings of the morning, high we rose above the temple, leaving behind the free and the dweller, deep in the halls neath the temple, closing the pathway to the Lord's disciples. Yet ever to him who has knowing, open shall be the path to Amente. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Chem. There, by my power, I conquered and ruled them, raised I to light the children of Chem. So the path is never closed to us. We can find the lords of the cycles if we work on ourselves. Atlantis is gone, Foth has to hide his spaceship, and he leaves us clues as to where it is buried, and he explains this in the next piece. So remember, he's in Egypt. Deep neath the rocks, I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion, yet like unto man. There neath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awake ye who have wisdom, Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. So he's warning us that the dark times continue and can get worse. We are, we've got to make sure that the light path is not put out. We've got to make sure that the ancient truths are always passed on to those with ears to hear. The Foth continues, each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me, seek in the doorway to life shall be thine. 
Seek thou in my pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in a wall. Use thou the key of the seven and open to thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee, <clears throat> now unto thee I've given my wisdom. Now unto thee I've given my way. Follow the pathway. Solve thou my secrets. Unto thee I have shown the way. So is this marker for the Hall of Records the Sphinx? I believe so. As we know, the head of the Sphinx has been changed from its original. But if it had been a lion-headed monument, then that could be the place. The Sphinx and Lions of the Sun, it was originally built in about 10,000 um, before Christ. So 10,000 BCE, which would have aligned it with the star constellation of Leo the Lion. Now, there are many pyramids in Egypt, around the world, in fact, but the pyramid Foth is talking about is the Great Pyramid, which still has many secrets to reveal to us. Though said to be the burial ground of one of the pharaohs, you are probably aware that no body was ever found in it, and that the pharaohs were normally buried in tombs in the Valley of the Kings. Nobody really knows who built the pyramids or why, but Foth states that it was he, that he created this building, and if one understands the keys he gives us, then one is, un one is able to unlock the pyramid and reveal its secrets. We need the key, and we will find them in these emerald tablets. So here we go into emerald tablet six, the key of magic. And Foth writes, Hark ye, O man, to the wisdom of magic. Hark the knowledge of powers forgotten. Long ago in the days of the first man, warfare began between darkness and light. Man, then as now, were filled with both darkness and light. And while in some darkness held sway, in other light filled the soul. I age old in this warfare, the eternal struggle between darkness and light. Fiercely is it fought all through the ages, using strange powers hidden to man. Adepts has there been filled with the blackness, struggling always against the light. But others there are who, filled with brightness, have ever conquered the darkness of night. So within us, we have the continuing struggle between light and dark. We have the dark inside us too. But this training helps us in understanding that darkness, why it is there and what it is doing to us. We must become aware of it and watch the darkness as it tries to tempt us, perhaps with negative thoughts, perhaps a little dark voice that points something out that irritates us. The darkness comes through the mind, the light comes through the heart. The devil puts words into our heads, the divine source puts love and light into our heart. And as Foth says, Wherever ye may be in all ages and plain, surely ye know of the battle with night. Long ages ago, the sons of the morning descending found the world filled with night. There in that past began the struggle, the age-old battle, darkness and light. So the darkness has an agenda to take us away from the light. It wants to distract us from the divine source, even convince us that there is no light, that it is an illusion. The darkness will feed our ego, boost it with falseness, fill it with pride and desire. So reading on with Foth. Many in the time were so filled with darkness that only feebly flamed the light from the night. Some they were, masters of darkness, who sought to fill all with their darkness, sought to draw others into their night. Fiercely withstood they, the masters of brightness, fiercely fought they from the darkness of night, sought ever to tighten the fetters, the chains that bind men to the darkness of night. Used they always the dark magic brought into men by the power of darkness, magic that enshrouded man's soul with darkness. Banded together is in order, brothers of darkness, they through the ages, antagonist they are to the children of men. Walked they, always secret and hidden, found yet not found by the children of men. Forever they walked and worked in darkness, hiding from the light in the darkness of night. So the dark brothers hide away. And they say they're not found by the children of men, yet they are found by the children of men because they 
trick us, they distract us, they make us think there's something other. And it's not till it's hopefully not too late that we realize that they are dark forces. Now, it was humanity that brought in the powers of darkness. They forget that the divine has given us free will to do as we want. And the men and women who called upon the dark forces were looking for a way to get what they desired. They were looking for an easy route. And the darkness let them know that it was around and that it could show them an easy route. Usually it promises to fulfill one's wishes, which it does at first. Then once it has you in its grip, then it starts manipulating people to its more darker ways. And as Foff says, silently, secretly use they their power, enslaving and binding the soul of men. Unseen they come and unseen they go. Man in his ignorance calls them from below. Dark is the way of the dark brothers travel, dark of the darkness, not of the night. Travelling over earth, they walk through man's dreams. Power they have gained from the darkness around them to call other dwellers from out of their plane in ways that are dark and unseen by man. Into man's mind space reach the dark brothers. Around it, they close the veil of their night. There for its lifetime, that soul dwells in bondage, bound by the fetters of the veil of the night. Mighty are they in the forbidden knowledge, forbidden because it is one with the night. So the brothers of darkness are sneaky and because we humans have free will, we can choose to follow their path or that of the light but the dark brothers trick us to their ways. Their dark path lets them walk through man's dreams, causing nightmares, disrupting our sleep. And without a good night's sleep, we were all a bit grumpy. Sleep is a time when we have the possibility to connect with the divine. So protect yourself before you go to sleep. A prayer to the divine source for protection from the dark forces whilst you sleep takes very little time. And always say it just before you're going to sleep. Ask for the angels to protect you. But the dark forces can also act upon us during the day. The dark brothers can reach into man's mind space. They can mess with our minds. As Foff says, Hark ye, O Moen, and list to my warning. Be ye free from the bondage of night. Surrender not your soul to the brothers of darkness. Keep thy face ever turned towards the light. Know ye not, O man, that your sorrow only has come through the veil of the night. I man, heed ye my warning, strive ever upward, turn your soul towards the light. You can always call, call upon the divine source, you know, upon the light forces, whether it be Christ, Foth, whoever, an angel, an archangel, just don't go to the dark forces, calling up the devils and demons, because they'll always trick you. Foth says the brothers of darkness seek for their brothers, those who travelled the pathway of light, for well know they that those who have travelled far towards the sun in their pathway of light have great and yet greater power to bind with darkness, the children of light. And they do come for people that are light walkers. You know, to them, it's a, a great bonus if they can pull someone off this path and bring them back to the darkness. List ye, O man, to he who comes to you, but weigh in the balance if his words be of light. For many there are who walk in dark brightness and yet are not the children of light. Easy it is to follow their pathway, easy to follow the path that they lead. But yet, O oh man, heed ye my warning. Light comes only to him who thrives. Hard is the pathway that leads to the wisdom. Hard is the pathway that leads to the light. Many shall ye find the stones in your pathway, many the mountains to climb towards the light. What well, better glory for the dark forces than to be able to turn a truth seeker, a spiritual warrior, one is who is of the light, off their path. So they will come for the sons and daughters of the light, but not in a glaringly obvious way. They come on a sneaky path, perhaps pretending to be of the light. So one must be aware, follow one's conscience. Do not do things that do not seem right. If your conscience is tingling away like spider senses, you know, like Spider-Man, your spidey senses, tune into them. Verify the source all the time. Meditate on situations and use your heart. As Foff says, yet know ye, O man, to him that overcometh, free will he be of the pathway of light. 
For ye know, O man, in the end, light must conquer, and darkness and night be banished from light. Listen, O man, and heed ye this wisdom. Out there shall flash from the darkness the light. Even as it exists among men, the dark brothers, so there exist brothers of light. Antagonists they of the brothers of darkness, seeking to free men from the night. Powers have they, mighty and potent, knowing the law, the planets obey. Work they ever in harmony and order, freeing the man's soul from its bondage of night. Secret and hidden walk they also. No not are they to the children of men. Ever have they fought the dark brothers, conquered and conquering time without end. So the dark forces have the ability to disguise themselves and we shall come to that soon in another tablet. We shall find out about the glamour that they use to deceive us and what we can do to reveal their true identity to us. Foff says, yet always light shall in the end be master, driving away the darkness of night. And this is true. Doesn't matter how many times we are caught up in the reincarnation cycle, there's always the chance to return to the light. Everybody, every person on this planet has a chance to reach the light. Foff says, I, man, know ye this knowing, always beside thee walk the children of light. Masters they of the sun power, ever unseen, yet the guardians of men. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the light. Free are they of dark amente, free of the halls where life reigns supreme. Sons are they and laws of the morning, children of light to shine among men. Like man are they and yet are unlike, never divided were they in the past. One had they been in oneness eternal throughout all space since the beginning of time. Up did they come in oneness with the all one. Up from the first space, formed and unformed, given to man had they secrets that shall guard to protect him from all harm. He who will travel the path of the master, free must he be of the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless. Conquer must he the phantom of fear. Knowing must he gain of all of the secrets, travel the pathway that leads through the darkness, yet ever before him keep the light of his goal. Obstacles great shall he meet in the pathway, yet press on to the light of the sun. You are not born into either the light or the dark ways. It is something that you will develop as you grow. You pick which side that you are on. But you can also change signs any time throughout your life. So maybe not advisable to keep going back and forth between the dark and the light. It's kind of like a football team. If you join a football club and you stay with that club, you're supposed to stay with it for the rest of your life. And it'd be nice if you found the light and stayed with that for the rest of your life. But if you get caught up in the darkness, the light will always welcome you back if you are true. Fof says, Hear ye, O man, the sun is the symbol of the light that shines at the end of thy road. Now to thee give I the secrets, now to meet the dark power, meet and conquer the fear from the night. Only by knowing can you conquer, only by knowing can you have light. Now, we all get muddled with what is going on. We can feel the darkness trying to grip us, but sometimes it might actually be our own self that has fallen into a dark hole. Here is one of Foff's actions to help you discern whether it is the darkness that has you or your own inner ways being disturbed by the darkness or by yourself. Now I give unto thee the knowledge known to the masters, the knowing that conquers all the dark fears. Use this, the wisdom I give thee. Master, thou shalt be of the brothers of night. When unto thee comes a feeling, drawing thee nearer to the darker gate, Examine thine heart and find out if the feeling thou hast come from within. If thou shalt find the darkness thine own faults, banish them forth from the place in thy mind. Send through thy body a wave of vibration, irregular first, regular second, repeating time after time until free. So remember, irregular first and then regular second, and then repeat. Bob says, Start the wave force in thy brain centre, direct it in waves from thine head to thy foot. But if thou findest thine heart is not darkened, be sure that a force is directed to thee. Only by knowing can thou overcome it. Only by wisdom can thou hope to be free. Knowledge brings wisdom and wisdom is power. 
attain and you shall have power over all. Seek ye first a place bound by darkness, place ye a circle around about thee. Stand erect in the circle, in the midst of the circle. You stand erect in the midst of the circle you've put round yourself. Cover yourself in this circle. Use thou this formula and you shall be free. Rise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes and draw in the light. So you're pulling the light down. And he tells you to do this by calling to the spirit of light through the space time. Using these words and thou shalt be free. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name. I, the seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. By their names, I call them to aid me, free me, and save me from the darkness of night. Untanos, Curtis, Chiatl, and Goyana. Hurtle, Zembata, Ardell. Now these names are very powerful and when you say them, make sure that you are in a place ready to receive their power. They align with the chakras and you should be able to feel that chakra energy energize you as you say the name that goes with it. And I was saying before about the numbers, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, they're probably the lower chakras that we all have. The one and the two are the higher chakras that we're trying to attain to reach. Once we've connected with them higher chakras, we're then connected with the universe. Them higher chakras are connected to the universe all the time. And Foff says, by their names I employ thee. I implore thee. Ugh. By their names, I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. Know ye, O man, that when you have done this, you shall be free from the fetters that bind you. Cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. See ye not that the names have the power to free by vibration the fetters that bind. Use them at need to free thou thine brother so that he too may come forth from the night. Thou, O oh man, art thou brother's helper, let him not lie in the bondage of night. Now unto thee give I my magic. Take it and dwell on the pathway of light. Light unto thee, life unto thee, sun may thou be on the cycle above. So remember the vibrations. We want to attune to the harmonic vibrations of the universe, the cosmic laws that are running the universe. Keep your heart in check. And let us continue the teachings of Fof the Atlantean.